Okay, folks, let's get to testing this axe out and see how she does. Oh, no! Look what happened. Let me bring you a little closer up. My word, I used the, the flick method and it twisted the head of the axe completely sideways. Now what? Okay, enough of this tomfoolery. Let's get to changing some tires. So, today we're going to be dismounting this tire from the split ring rim. This rim is referred to by some as the Widowmaker. Um, I'm going to dispel some of that for you right now. Okay. First of all, there's even talk that this might not be the specific rim that they're talking about. Second of all, as long as the rim and tire are in good condition, fair condition, then if handled properly, the risk really isn't there. Okay? Not only that, but once you release the air from the tire, the risk, any risk there is, goes down substantially. Okay? So, that being said, let's talk a little bit about the tools uh, used for, for dismounting this tire from this type of rim. Okay? First of all, as you saw in earlier footage, and may have recognized, this is a duckbill hammer. While we won't be using this because I have some hydraulic tools that I can use instead, this duckbill hammer can be used to break down a tire of this type, but can be really a pain in the butt if you're not skilled at using it, and also if the rim has been painted several times, and um, or the tire has been on there forever and it's stuck right to the rim, um, the duckbill doesn't work great. Now with a skilled person you can do a you can do a good job, but I question when it's really bad, like the ones I did a while back, whether or not you could actually break those down with a duckbill. Um, then let me explain some of the conditions that were I was in during that time. First of all, it was below zero. Okay. And second of all, the tire that was on there was um, on there for a number of years. I don't think it was an actual original from 1971, but it is slightly possible because it was the military, uh, the ones that you used to see, used to seeing on a deuce and a half. Um, so, and it was weather cracked pretty bad and everything else. But, um, it may not have been the original, but when I peeled that off, I literally had to peel it from the rim. Um, so, we're going to talk about this hydraulic setup that I'm going to use. Um, I paid like 320, under 320 bucks for it. Um, it's, it's a uh, 10,000 pound hydraulic air pump and a, um, and a hydraulic bead breaker. Um, You can find them um, on eBay and such. Um, this one, I think I'll, I'll I'll put the numbers down to it. The numbers there, but they're no longer advertising this one. But there's plenty of them that are similar, um, and this this one works really good. And there's plenty of them just like it. Um, so have a look around. You should be able to find something um, of good quality and not pay, you know huge bucks for it. Um, they're not exactly cheap, cheap but $320 is a good deal. Alright, so let's uh, let's get to the first, let's get to some of the other tools that you'll you'll need to use. Um, you're going to need to use um, a simple tire core removal tool. Um, we'll just set that over here on the tire. Um, you're going to need to use a, a, a sledgehammer of some sort. Um, I like using this this, this little one here, it works fine. Um, and because I won't need the ductile, that could be used as a, as a, like this too, so, uh, but I won't be using it. One thing I don't have here, um, it's missing, um, is a wire brush for cleaning up the rim and tire, the rim, um, the two pieces of the rim after, after you're done disassembling it. 
to clean it up for reassembly. I don't have that here. Um, and when you do break them down, you're going to want to inspect your your inspector rim. You're going to do one before you you go to break it down, and then you're going to do one afterward to make sure that that rim, uh, that split ring, and that rim are still good. Um, then you're going to want a pry bar of some sort like this, probably. Um, a couple tire spoons. Um, I got a couple tire spoons here. Um, I got a crowbar here if I need it. Um, and what I have here is a tire iron from an F250 or F350. Um, and this little, the way that this end is designed, and part of it's broke off, the little lip that goes in there is broke off. Um, they are very handy for um, for getting into, and I'm going to take you for a little rod slot that tire iron goes into, which is right here, um, right there. Just a little slot there, and uh, we'll get in there. That tire iron fits very nicely in there. Um, they they do make um, Ken Tools and other companies. Uh, they do make ones that will fit in there. Uh, Napa didn't have anything in stock, so try to find just the right one. Um, and those those are pretty economical to buy, or you may already have one because you may have an F250 or a 350. Um, so you may already have that. Um, but there there is Kentool does sell something that would that goes in there and works very well. Um, but that that's a good substitution for that. So. There's that. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to have is some soap and water. Um, tire lube is better, um, but soap and water will work. Uh, more soap than water a lot of times works best, and that's because you want to lube that tire up some so that um, the tool can slip in there easily, and especially if you're going to reuse the tire, which we're not going to be reusing this tire, um, and later on in the video I'll show you why. Um, because as you can see, it looks like there's a lot of meat on this tire, and sure enough, there is. Um, but this tire has been on this. This tire is an older tire. But so let's get into the first part of it. Uh, just simply, we're going to remove the uh, the cap from the valve stem. And the first thing we're going to do is going to let the air out of this tire. Um, Why we're letting the air out of this tire, right? I did already look at this tire, wheel and tire some, you know, it's not bubbling out the side and all that good stuff, so, um, or I should say all that bad stuff, so there really isn't a risk there. Um, but let's talk about some safety things here. Um, I'm not always good about all the safety stuff. I live in the real world. I'm not wearing safety glasses. That's a good idea, but um, my excuse a lot of times for not wearing those is because I don't work for a company that buys me new safety glasses every time I need some because you know, they get scratched and dirty and you can't see out of them and all that stuff. Um, so, um, right now what we're doing is letting the air out of that and that really, once that's done, that really, really reduces the risk involved. Another thing, I should have boots on most of the time. I wear boots. I am wearing shoes. I've done this uh, a number of times, and uh, I feel comfortable enough that it's not, while it's not the perfect thing to be wearing, I'm not scared that I'm wearing uh, shoes instead of boots. Um, although I do highly recommend uh, that you wear some boots. Um, so, all right. So now, um, I'm going to take you for a ride again. We're going to go over here, um, and we're going to, I'll perch you up here and see if I can't aim you down here. Um, we're going to take, and we're going to hook up. Our pump. Yeah, 
and bead breaker. Um, these things work really, really good for this kind of tire. They really do. Um, so I strongly suggest if you're going to be breaking down several of these that you get one of these. Um, so that's hooked in there. Now we're just going to hook our uh, air up. Take this little blower off. Hook our air up. I'm going to open up this valve here, which I close up when I transport this because uh, your fluid will leak out of that if you tip it or whatnot while you're transporting it. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the compressor for a minute that's hooked up to this. Um, I've got an 80 gallon, 6 horsepower, 175 psi a setup. Um, you want ad adequate air pressure and adequate um, volume. Um, I think it's set at 90 psi or whatever at this point. Um, but a smaller compressor will definitely work. You start getting below 120, you start getting below a compressor that has a, you know, shut off at 125. And, you know, you get into small pancake tanks and you're pushing it luck a little bit uh, with running something like that. Um, so you want an adequate, adequate air compressor hooked up to it. Um, and this is plenty enough. It's not that it needs a ton of air, but it needs a fairly good supply of, you know, pressure and air. Um, but anyways, we've got that hooked up. Now, I've removed all the pressure from this tire. Um, another thing that makes it hard for the duck bill to break one of these down sometimes is if it's an older tire and it's a real stiff, uh, stiff tire, it doesn't have much give to it. So when you're hitting it with a duck, duck bill to separate it, it doesn't it has a tendency not to want to uh, separate. And then you can't keep. Well, we'll show you. You can't. Let's let's just get, get let's let's just get to breaking this down. All right. So I'm gonna start. Take our tire tool. And again, I've released the, the pressure out here. So what you're gonna end up doing is on this side of the bud wheel, there's these holes every so often. You're gonna want to set this right here. You're gonna want to set that through the holes, and then you're gonna take. Before you start that, you're gonna want to get that as close as you can to there. So that it's kind of sitting like that. And as you can see the far side, I'm gonna turn this a little bit, but you can see on the far side it's in contact underneath the rim. You're gonna do that, but before you even do that, what you're gonna to wanna to do so that it slides a little easier, that's where your water and soap come in handy. And you're just going to go around. The, and tire loops work, works even better, but if you don't have any, water and soap is sufficient. Um, so we're just going to go around the rim, pour some of this out, uh, put it in here. Um, some people will even just use just, can just use straight dish detergent soap. Um, Because you kind of want some sort of slippery lube on the tire. Obviously, not going to the tire, too. Um, okay. Now, I'm going to exaggerate for a minute. I'm tilting this way up like this, but you are going to want to tilt that up, son, so it's underneath the rim. These two handles are here for you to hold. Alright. And then I'm just going to take my foot pump. Now, if I look down and I see that I, I don't have that under the rim quite as much as I like, um, for safety reasons, I can just hit my release and get a little closer before I do it. And then,
Now, I'm going to bring you around again so you can have a look at this. Okay. This is where the duckbill wouldn't hold this down. This will actually hold it down and, and uh, let's see if I can get you in here. So you got the space in between um, the rim and the tire there. Uh, and if you had a, a tire that was really stuck to the rim, that makes a huge difference. So, so what we'll do is uh, I'm going to probably just shut you off, um, but i got to go around and, and do this in several places in the rim to get it released from the rim, the top of the rim. And I'll just keep going around and I'll do that. Um, depending on how stuck your tire is, depends on how much you might have to do that um, and how many spots. So, um, I'm going to turn you off for a minute so you don't have to watch me keep doing that 5,000 times. Uh, well, it's not 5,000 times, but you get my basic point. So, the one spot you don't want to have to put the uh, hydraulic tar tool through is this spot in the bud wheel where the valve stem is. Um, obviously but there are enough holes around here that you won't have to so just avoid that one so for this tire we're going to try and see if we can just break this bead off by hitting it in just two spots um, so here we go So let's just walk around it. It is all popped, but let's just make sure it's all popped everywhere. But yeah, so by using this uh, bead breaker um, on a rim that's, that's in good shape and not stuck to it, it just took two, two times. Um, and you can see that ram cycled out pretty far, but that's all it took and then we'll just release it and uh, I'll put the camera down so I can hold the machine and not drop it let's pop this, this ring off of here this tire iron slot here kick down in there
other tire iron. Put a spoon. Step on this. Underneath it. Pry up like that. Then we'll end up working our way around the rim. But before we do that, um, I'm going to bring you over just so you can see a little better what's going on in case you, in case you can't see from over there. Um, there you go. Um, we'll leave you over here for a little while so you can get a look at that while I'm going around the rim. And we'll just keep... Prying up and walking our way around the rim. Flip it over and the other side of that spoon. Take the first spoon out, move it past the other spoon. Um, there is a little spring tension on this, but there isn't a ton of it. Um, you release the air, as I said before. Um, and now, because I've got that bar, okay, I'm going to move you over here and keep you on task here. I'm going to move you over here. And at this point, it's perfectly safe to take this and pull it out by hand. Step up here to do it. And since I keep knocking you, around, I'm going to put you back over here. Like so, in a safe spot. And then I'm going to climb up on this rim a little bit. And that's it. And it pops off. And there you have it. And now we'll break the other side free. Let's see how many places we have to. Break this with a bead sticker. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to try for two. So first, let's grab some air. Nope. 
I didn't think so, but... Alright, so that's shot one. Alright, I'm going to adjust your camera. Just a little bit here. If I can. Let's see. Let's see where you at. Because I'd hate to lose the shot of it. Ugh, and I hate this because the sun gets right in you. So you can't see the lens. Okay, nope, I do have to go one down because if you stay up like that, you won't show it all. Alright, so. Let's do it in a second spot. On the other side. Aha! Uh -huh. Don't even have to. She did pop with just one. Okay. So that is done now. Let's uh bring you over here. I gotta pull this up like this. Okay. So that we can yeah, let me set you in here, see if I can do it without even moving the rim yet. I don't think you can, but that's partially. So, let's leave you sitting there. You're probably going to fall over. I can almost guarantee it. Maybe not. Would already head this out, but we're trying to make this so that you don't fall over when I do it. But can I say that I get up here and fall over? Okay, we'll try that again. Well, we tried. We fell over just as we pulled it out. Are you dizzy? Just shake around a bit. Alright, so that's that. That rims out. Alright. All set. Then we'll pull that, pull that, we'll pull that uh, here. Set in here. Pull out the flap. Turn you around 180 degrees. There's your flap. Now, let's reach in here. Turn you around again. Face this way. These ones are sticking in there just a little bit. You can probably hear it if I'm quiet. It won't work. I'm still working kind of behind you. And of course we can get this out faster if I wasn't trying to give you a view of it. 
foot. Here we go. The head. Pretty tall, you might have to dock about that. And there it is. It's out. And we're done. Let's take a quick look at this rim. See what kind of condition it's in. Looks pretty darn good. We'll clean it up some. This little bit of rust scale will get off it. Uh, now would be the time to paint it if you were going to paint it after you cleaned it up as opposed to when it's on the truck with the tire on it and you get paint uh, holding the ring to the rim and makes it makes it difficult to take it off the next time and the paint on the lugs doesn't help either. Um, deuces are famous for wheels that are stuck on them um, and that's one of the reasons why. So alright, that, that's it for this video. Um, our next video is probably going to be about uh, putting it back, putting a tire on the rim. We're going to be putting a new tire on, a new tire flap, and a new tube.